you look at it closely, it appears to be the combined efforts of a central heating engineer and a light aircraft manufacturer. That is all pipes and valves and unions and seals, and the rocket itself is aluminium sheet and rivets and screw heads. It's quite remarkable, really. And it's even better when you're shown around by someone who's actually flown one to the moon. I must congratulate you on the size of your rocket. <laughs> I always forget how big it is until I see it again. Yeah, we had the heaviest launch vehicle for Apollo 17. Harrison Schmidt was one of the last men to ride a Saturn V. He wasn't a fighter jock. He was selected because NASA wanted to send a scientist up there. The other thing that strikes me about it as well, looking at it in bits and thinking about the launch, is the basic principles of rocketry and a big rocket are actually quite simple, aren't they? I mean, rocket engines, in principle, are much simpler than, say, petrol engines, but it's just the amount of actual stuff that you need to do it on that scale. Well, you have to control the burn, you have to control the injection uh, of the materials that are going in, uh, and uh, that has to be very precisely controlled to maximize the thrust. It's not actually very sophisticated. It's pipes, tubes, wires, rivets, aluminium sheet. Well, you have to move uh, liquids and electrons. <laughs> yeah. And uh, mostly liquids. And the, uh, at the time, the, the lightest weight structural material they had was uh, aluminum alloy. So that is liquid oxygen and kerosene. Kerosene. Paraf yeah. a aviation fuel, in effect. Yeah. And um, that is a bomb, really, isn't it? Well, yeah, the whole thing is. I can't believe there wasn't a moment of doubt in your mind that when you sat up at that pointy bit, when you thought, that's a hell of a lot of fuel underneath, <laughs> and it only needs well, a ropey bit of riveting by some bloke. And... I think we all believe that the uh, launch escape system would save us if there was any problem. That's confidence. This rocket had six million components. Even with NASA's target of 99.9% .9 success, they could expect 6,000 parts to fail, even on a good launch. One of the interesting things is that when you, you see the thrusters up there on the side of the service module, each one of those has about 50 pound thrust. Right. And you always have to think of that in terms of 1.5 million pounds of thrust in the F1 engine. And, and the spectrum of technology that was required to make this kind of an adventure happen. That's a very good pub fact, that, astronaut Schmidt. Thank you very much. <laughs> That'll be useful. My pleasure. <laughs> but what still amazes me is this. The vast majority of the giant rocket stack, three whole stages, 94% of its fuel, got it just 100 miles from Earth. The basics of it are this. This bit up here, plus the lunar module that it docks with, is, wait for it, the spacecraft. This is the bit we have to send to the moon. All of this bit is the launch vehicle. Now, for this bit to go to the moon, it has to be accelerated to nearly 25,000 miles an hour so that it can escape the pull of Earth's gravity and be captured by the moon's gravity. The simple way of thinking about this is like the gearbox of a car. First gear sends you up through the dense atmosphere to 6,000 miles an hour. Second gear accelerates you to just over 15,000 miles an hour through the upper atmosphere. Third gear here takes you into orbit above the Earth, and then it fires again. That's fourth gear. That takes you out of orbit and on the way to the moon. Finally, you're going through the vacuum of space. In this, you're coasting, you're in top gear. <laughs> 